This is by far the best revenge story I have ever heard. Story time. So my aunt ended up going to her ex-boyfriend's wedding. So my aunt is the disappointment of my mum's side of the family. Like, even my parents tell me not to become like her. Even my grandma hates her. And you know what that means? She is the exact type of woman I want to be when I grow up. My aunt, who we'll call Amy, is in her mid-30s now and she's got loads of tattoos, piercings. She's always got different coloured hair. She plays the drums and she works as a bartender. So here's the kicker. So last year, after a really bad Menti B, I begged my dad to take me to my aunt's house. I just needed my cool aunt in my life. I had just dropped out of my final exam and I was in pretty bad condition, not gonna lie. And that is when Auntie Amy told me this story. So at the time, she was dating this guy who we will call Steve. And Steve was the one. She dreamt of spending her whole life with Steve. That was until she found out that Steve was getting a little bit cozy with Susan from accounts by the photocopier, if you know what I mean. Not judging at all, Steve. And if you thought that was scandalous enough, my aunt one day gets a knock at the door. Guess who it is? It's Susan from accounts. And dear Susan is here to deliver a wedding invitation. And do you know what? It was a bold move. I admire the bravery. And that wasn't the only news she was delivering, nay nay. She also dropped the bombshell that Susan was pregnant. Now, this is when Amy pulled the Uno reverse card. And my aunt excitedly turned round to Susan and said, Oh, that's quite interesting, actually, Susan, because Steve's infertile. So before they split up, Amy and Steve were trying to have a baby together and they were struggling and then they ended up breaking up. But before they did, they went to see a doctor about why they were struggling to have a baby. And the result of this ended up getting posted to Auntie Amy's house after they broke up and it turns out that Steve was infertile. And Steve never found out this information. Poor Steve is about to have two bombshells dropped on him. Okay, let's come forward in time again. Auntie Amy very cordially accepts the invite to the wedding and she goes to speak to Steve's brother who she was still quite close friends with and she encourages him to play a part in her revenge. So at the wedding, there is a little section called take a walk down memory lane. So it was basically just pictures of the couple from over the years. So after a few cute pictures of the couple, a picture of Susan kissing another man pops up, then another. And then another. Just as the bride Susan starts losing her shit, up pops Steve's infertility test results. And boy, was everybody here for the drama. Steve obviously looked utterly humiliated. And Susan began bawling her eyes out. This is what you get for messing with a woman's true feelings. Okay, so a couple of you asked for my opinions on these stories. Now, although I think this is absolutely exceptional revenge, and yes, Steve did cheat on her. Could we not have revealed this at like a different time? I absolutely love the brother as well. Like, of course he wants to get involved in the drama. He must absolutely hate the bride for wanting to get involved in his own brother's demise. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. The arsehole for telling my sister she's ridiculous for divorcing her husband over a TikTok prank. So my sister, who we'll call Amy, was married to a guy who we'll call Steve for about three years. This was until about two months ago when they separated over this prank that he pulled. I had always thought he was a really nice guy. He was super funny, nice to be around. And that is kind of why I think this whole thing is just so ridiculous over something that was just a mistake. So here's what happened. So Steve, whose job is on TikTok, decided he was going to pull a prank on Amy's 15-year-old son. Now, I won't go too much into what the prank was, but it ended up in my nephew falling and banging his head. And that is the whole reason she's decided to separate from him. He was actually rushed into hospital and is now being treated for brain damage. Now, struggles to eat because he's got impaired motor control and bless him even has a very very limited speech it's now got to the point where if you ask him something he'll just stare at you it's gotten to the point where my sister will have to kneel down next to him and very calmly and quietly ask him what he needs to get him to respond he's become such an angry angry kid and now all i see when i look at him is his seven-year-old self just masquerading in his 15 year old body now these symptoms are of course absolutely awful and possibly permanent but I keep saying it was just a mistake on behalf of Steve. I believe that divorce is way too much of a harsh punishment for this mistake. And instead they should have just negotiated boundaries and disallowed TikTok in the house or something along those lines. Cause her husband was the only one using TikTok in the house. I've been trying to keep the decision of the divorce to myself, but I am secretly mourning the loss of my brother-in-law. However, yesterday I went over and the topic of the incident came up. So I told her exactly what I thought. I said, I think you're being ridiculous over just a mistake. I told her that it might be worth considering her options here because like clearly this one was so emotionally driven. And my sister was not happy about this. Amy said that I was free to marry him because he'd be free soon. 
and my mother also interjected at that point. And despite liking my brother-in-law before, my mum turned around and said that I have no say in what my sister does with her life. And she then said that my precious brother-in-law ruined my nephew's life with his incompetence. So at that point, I yelled at them and said, this society's inability to forgive mistakes is the reason we're all in this mess. They eventually kicked me out when the argument went on for longer than like 10 minutes or so. Do you know what? I thought I was being exceptionally reasonable here. However, my boyfriend is also on their side. So what do you think? Am I the asshole? I'm gonna add my comments in here because I never get involved in the drama and I have opinions on this video. So the writer says that it was just a mistake, but I'm sorry, a mistake is getting someone the wrong type of Pepsi Max, not causing them to have a brain damage. And I think she should take her sister's advice and marry him because she is clearly in love with Steve. My brother gave my disabled little sister a reality check and it caused her to have a breakdown. Story time. My parents have three kids, me, Maya and Sally. The problem child here is Sally. When she was born, she had some sort of medical condition that caused doctors to think that she wasn't even gonna survive at all. My parents, granted, never gave up on her. They literally spent so much time and thousands of pounds on her treatment and a miracle happened. She has obviously survived, but she now has some brain deformities which impede her ability to socialise. And since then, my parents have literally coddled Sally to death. Sally literally had to have the best things. But to be fair, Maya did take the brunt of it all. For some unknown reason, Sally was always in competition with Maya. And I am convinced that my parents pit them against each other as well. If Maya had a doll's house, Sally had a bigger doll's house. And since then, Maya has literally been walking on eggshells around our parents. This one time, Maya once said that she had a crush on this guy. And what did Sally do? She only went and got with him in front of Maya. The last straw for Maya was when she was dating this guy in college. She brought him home, you know, meet the family. And she caught Sally and her boyfriend getting it on in the basement. Now that one was an absolute shitstorm. Now don't get me wrong, they did tell Sally off for like two days. But then in the end, they were like, it would be wrong to separate these two lovebirds. So at that point, Maya lost it. She screamed at them, telling them that she had endured their abuse for years and she wasn't standing for it anymore. And that was the point where she cut off complete contact. It was a move that completely divided the family. Sally, however, didn't give a shit. She actually then went on to date the same guy that she'd got with in the basement, so Maya's ex. So in a nice term of events, Maya did actually meet a really, really nice guy and they got married. Now Maya is pregnant with her first child. So my parents, obviously not wanting to miss out on their first grandchild, reached out to reconcile. And Maya was obviously sceptical, but she agreed. So this is where it goes down. My family has this big barbecue every year and we invite all of the family, all the distant family, everyone is there. And Maya, of course, came with her husband, Adam. Sally was also there with her now husband, which was in fact Maya's ex. And throughout the evening, Sally was trying to get close with Adam. When it came for dinner, my parents made their annual toast. Once they'd done, Sally stood up and she said some words. She said how she was so lucky to be there that she'd almost died when she was younger. And this is something that she has said over and over again just to get pity. She then redirected to Maya and said, I know it must be really hard for you that your ex is now my husband, but thanks for the blessing, babe. And she said, I know it must be so hard for you to be here knowing how hard it was for you to compete with me. But I applaud your bravery. This is the moment where Adam stood up. He said, how dare you insult my wife? Then the word vomit started. Now I'm paraphrasing here, but he said, you think you're so special because you're a miracle baby. Clearly your only achievement is surviving something that wasn't even your doing. What else do you have to show for it? Then this line killed me. He said, everything you have is basically borrowed from my wife. Even your pathetic husband. You're so annoying, even your husband doesn't like you that much because he's been trying to get with every cousin in the room. You're so shameless and pathetic that you even tried to hit on me. You already got a ex and now you want a husband as well. And then he said, I would rather die than be with a woman like you whose personality is like a paper bag. You've always been so jealous of Maya because you know that you will never be as amazing as her. That's why you stole from her because it was the only way you were going to get what she had. He might dropped and walked out. My neighbour's an asshole, so I caused a catastrophic rift in his marriage. So, bit of a backstory here. I live in a predominantly Mormon town. But I myself am not Mormon, but you do you. I'm fine with it. However, I do receive a fair amount of criticism from my across the road neighbour, we'll call him Steve, for our religious differences. So Steve has about 10 children and I am the guardian of my young sister. So about a year ago, I bought my sister a cat for her birthday. Steve was not happy about this. He told me that the cat was not allowed to be on his side of the road. So I was like, okay, whatever. And then a couple of days later, he called animal control because the cat was wandering on his side of the road. So animal control turned around and was like, we can't do anything considering it's not on your property. So the next time the cat goes onto his side of the road, he picks it up, he takes it to the animal shelter, he pretends the cat is his and they demand for them to put the cat down. The shelter obviously turned around and was like, we can't do that because you don't have the papers of ownership and she's also chipped. It was this big whole situation. 
and he has literally never been nice to us. For example, on the day we moved in, my little sister decided to make everyone in the neighbourhood some brownies, which is adorable. So she goes over to Steve's house, she knocks on the door, but there's no answer. So she decided to just pop them on his porch and she wandered back over to our house. When she gets back to ours, she turns around and she sees Steve looking her dead in the eye and sees him throwing the brownies in the bin. There has literally been so many things, like he gets his kids to come over and knock over our rubbish bin every rubbish day, so stuff goes everywhere. Okay, let's bring it real time. So me and my best friend the other day were talking about how we used to have pen pals. And that night I was doing a little bit of browsing on the internet and I found this website. And the website was called prisonpenpals.com. So naturally, I clicked on and found an array of prisoners that were looking for a pen pal. So after looking for a little while, I found this guy that was on death row. He'd done some not very nice things, as I'm sure you can tell. So how this works is that you send an email with the letter on, the guards print it off and they give it to the prisoner, the prisoner writes back and it gets sent to your address so that your address is protected from the prisoners. And at this point, I started thinking about my good old friend Steve. So I started to write a letter about how I was a trapped and secretly gay and Mormon man with a wife. I said how he had 10 kids and he was looking to start a marital affair with a prisoner. I whacked in Steve's address and I sent it. I'm not gonna lie, even though I had my petty satisfaction from it, I expected absolutely nothing to come from this. I kind of just thought he'd be going through his mail and not see it and then just toss it out so nothing would ever come of it, like I say. But boy, was I wrong. With it being a small town, one of my acquaintances works for the guy's business. And he was like, oh my God, have you heard about Steve? And I was like, no, because you know, I hadn't. And this guy, he filled me in on all the goss. So one of Steve's kids had actually found the letter and took it to Steve's wife. So the wife actually read the letter from the response from the prisoner. And apparently she threw an absolute fit, which, you know, pop off queen, we all would. Anyway, long story short, he's now out. She made him pack his bags. And apparently this wasn't the first time he had tried to start an affair with another man. And apparently this was just the last straw for her. And I'm low-key shocked, horrified, but low-key kind of amused by this whole predicament. This is quite possibly the sweetest revenge I have ever heard of. So there was this really beautiful girl in my school, we'll call her Amy, and she was one of those popular girls. And my best friend Steve had the biggest crush on Amy. He asked her out so many times, but she was literally just always busy. I kind of felt a little bit like, at what point, Steve, are we going to take the hint? However, that being said, she didn't really discourage him, though. I personally just think she liked the attention. So one day, my friend Steve ended up getting some tickets to a sold-out Harry Styles concert. He'd bought them from a friend last minute that had to go out of town for an emergency. So Mike immediately called the girl of his dreams, Amy, and she immediately accepted because, let's face it, who is passing on Harry Styles tickets? When I tell you, I have literally never seen Steve happier. Okay, so fast forward to the night of the concert. So they were both stood outside the concert just getting their merch. Amy suddenly turned around and was like, oh, there's my friend. I'm just going to go say hi. I'll be right back. And you guessed it. She, in fact, did not come right back. So Steve went into the concert and he was like, well, I'll just sit here and wait for when she comes back. Because realistically, that's the only place she's going to be able to find him again now. So Steve sat for the whole show and she literally never came back. Now, Steve is literally the biggest gentleman. Even after she ditched him for like the entire concert, he still waited for her in the car park afterwards to take her home. <laughs> Boy is literally the sweetest. And obviously she didn't come out. She wasn't there. She wasn't answering her phone. So Steve left obviously feeling very hurt. So she did end up ringing him the next day. Apparently the friend that she'd seen was actually her ex. She then went on to say that she'd had a really good talk with her ex and how they had sorted so much stuff out. And she said that they had just lost track of time. And it turns out that she didn't even watch any of the concerts. She stood outside and just spoke to her ex the whole time. And then Steve, he accepted her apology and he asked if they could give it another go and try again. And she said, yeah. And she even said that she was shocked at how nice and forgiving he was with it all. Oh, Amy, you better wait, girl. So next Saturday, it's date night. Steve had booked this unreal seafood restaurant that was about an hour up the coast. He was polite and chatty the whole way there. And in a very clever move, he made the reservation in her name. They were seated. Steve ordered a really expensive, nice bottle of wine. Now, he told her to treat herself. So Amy goes ahead and orders loads of expensive stuff off the menu. Halfway through the meal, their bill was at $300. So then Steve excused himself to go use the toilet and he made sure to use the line, I'll be right back. And at that point, Steve walked out the restaurant, into the car park and drove away, leaving Amy with the bill and without a ride home. My best friend wants me to be the godmother of my own boyfriend's baby. Story time. I have been both raging and in fits of laughter about how stupid this situation is. I feel like a fourth grader's English project about all the different emotions they feel. So for the context, I've been dating my boyfriend for nearly four years now. 
and I thought that this was the man that I was going to marry. And I thought my best friend will be maid of honour since we've been friends since we were literally teenagers. I feel like in this situation, I'm what you'd call an idiot surrounded by even bigger idiots. So as you can probably tell from the title, my boyfriend has been seeing my best friend. And she has now fallen pregnant. Isn't that just brilliant? So yesterday, they both came to me and admitted to me that they had been having an affair for the past year and a half. She told me that even though she loved me, she loved him more. And then she went on to say that it was never meant to happen like this. Honestly, like the smell of bullshit that was coming out of her mouth, it was just making me dizzy. She went on to say that she feels horribly guilty about what's happened, but that she always wants me in her life. And then this girl, she just dropped the bombshell. She asks me to be godmother. And let me tell you, she must have bumped her head on his tiny little balls. Because literally, on what universe is that a good idea? And you know what? Looking back, I definitely should have known. I was connecting the dots. There was literally so many times I would catch them giving each other looks. Oh my god, then there was even times when I'd come home and she'd be in my apartment without me there, obviously, just her and my boyfriend, and she'd say that it was a surprise visit. I literally can't even believe how dumb this whole situation is. I think it's safe to say that my lovely boyfriend will be going down as an ex in my contacts, and of course, so will my best friend. So I've decided that I'm going to confront my boyfriend tonight. And I'm gonna wish him and my best friend a miserable life together. Because you know, it is the life that they both deserve. Am I the arsehole for not attending my twin's birthday party because I'm only invited as a guest? So me and my twin brother are super close and we hang out literally all the time. In a few days, it's our 25th birthday and we share the same friendship group. This has been the same group of friends we have had since school. And then he also has a close group of girlfriends which I've known for like the past five years or so. I definitely class them as closer friends to him but we hang out all the time throughout the years called my twin brother Steve so I was added to a group chat called Steve's surprise birthday dinner being organized by this one girl in the group we'll call her Amy and it's very clear that I'm invited just as a guest one of the groups said that it would also be nice to see me on my birthday as well so I obviously just felt like a bit of an afterthought I wouldn't have even minded if the girls had made like a little party for just them and my brother but it's the fact that they've invited me and then my close friends and my partner as well which you know it's giving inconsiderate I just don't get how I'm invited to my literal twin brother's birthday when it's also my birthday as well by one of our closest friends. Like, what? My boyfriend also found this really strange. She was like, why didn't she just reach out to me and we could have arranged something together as a surprise for the both of you? So in the chat as well, it clearly states a certain time that we're all to arrive because my brother is then getting there 20 minutes late. And the fact that me and my brother are twins is not new information to the organiser. Like I said, we've been friends for years. And also me and my brother literally always do joint things for our birthday as well. So I don't know why they've decided this year to do something completely different. Last year, we had this big dinner. All of our friendship groups were invited, all of his friends, all of my friends, our partners. So now I'm at a crossroads because I just don't know whether or not I'm gonna attend. So I don't go, let's say, and I'm just gonna feel left out because our mutual friends are going and I'm not gonna be able to see them. Or on the other hand, I do go and I just know how I'm gonna feel. I'm just gonna spend the whole meal sitting, feeling uncomfortable, feeling disrespected. I'm just scared that it's gonna feel like only my brother is the one being celebrated on my birthday. We've also realized, we've just checked the chat, that the table is booked for 10 people on a set menu and there's currently 12 people invited. So now I'm worried like, what if we go and it's already over capacity and we can't just pull up a chair and sit down? This dinner is literally tomorrow night, so let me know what you think I should do and I will give you an update as soon as I have one.